There is a hidden world beneath a remote landlocked delta. An unexplored wilderness that teems with life and diversity. Few have ever laid eyes on this Eden, for it is guarded from humans by some of Africa's most dangerous creatures. filmmakers braves these perilous waters to track the journey of a flood that affects almost every animal in northern Botswana. From the smallest creatures to Africa's giants, all must run the gauntlet of this moving tide. This is the story of the underwater Okavango. In the dry season, water streams across Botswana's sands. Life moves to meet it, spared from the ravages of the outlying desert. It's in the peak of the dry season that the Okavango Delta floods. The tide of water throws a lifeline to the thirsty animals of northern Botswana. People come from across the globe to witness the wildlife the flood draws into this extraordinary landscape. But there is a side to the delta few humans will ever see. These waters have gatekeepers. dangerous place. Cantankerous hippos patrol the channels, known to attack anything they perceive as a threat. Venturing below the surface has always been considered foolhardy. with local knowledge and a unique understanding of crocodile behavior underwater, a local film crew has been diving and filming here over the past year. Their experiences reveal how this epic winter flood transforms the Delta ecosystem, both above and below the surface. Support so much life, starts his journey far away in a vast catchment in neighboring Angola. It's December, and torrential summer rains dump billions of liters of water over the Angolan escarpment. The rains cascade down hillsides and merge into rivers. One by one, they flow together and squeeze the collected waters of the entire season into the Okavango River. The pulse of water travels hundreds of kilometers until, 
Just as summer ends, it enters the Okavango. The first section of the delta is a long channel known as the Panhandle, lined on either side by kilometers of reeds and papyrus. Before this pulse arrives, levels are at their lowest. Tannins from decomposing plants stain the first new water that pours into the panhandle. Despite the color, the water is clear and virtually devoid of nutrients. The sudden surge swallows sprawling banks of papyrus. As the waters deepen, their roots lift from the bottom in giant rafts. Beneath them, an unexplored network of caves is opened. The caverns are pitch dark and starved of oxygen by decomposing plant matter. Yet in this hidden world, life prevails. Small catfish known as squeakers sift through the detritus to prey on tiny shrimps. Above them, others spend their lives inverted feeling out prey in the floating roots with supersensory whiskers. Alongside them, bulldog fish make tunnels in the roots and share them with their close cousins, the stone bashers. Both belong to a family called the Mamirids that find prey in the dark by emitting tiny electrical discharges. They hunt in open water at night, but hide out here during the day. These waters are raided by far deadlier killers than themselves. Giant, six-foot, sharp-toothed catfish patrol the caves. They know exactly where to look. Long feelers sense the tiny sparks of electricity that the Mamirids emit. There is nowhere to hide. The catfish thrash through the papyrus roots and flush the little fish out of hiding. Hunting blind, they snatch whatever their feelers detect. until the hunter has eaten its fill.
but the catfish has to answer to a bigger predator. Five-meter Nile crocodiles also hide in these caves. The giant catfish are their favorite prey. Though the crocodiles don't see well in the water, they too can feel out their victims. Sensory pits in their snout detect any movement ahead. Inside the caves, the main river slowly begins to clear as the flood pushes through. As it drains to the south, thousands of fish are washed from the outlying floodplains into the deeper channels. Shoals of tiger fish cruise near the surface, searching for prey. These are the African equivalent of the piranha, the continent's most successful freshwater predatory fish. Out here in the open channels, they conduct a reign of terror. Tiny minnows at the surface make easy pickings. But tigerfish will hunt sharp-toothed catfish and even baby crocodiles if they get the chance. thin-faced bream has a different strategy. It uses camouflage rather than agility to catch minnows. continues at the surface as the draining water brings more and more food into the channels. The film crew follows the flood south. The pulse hits a raised fault line carved across the panhandle and spills over its lip into the shallow channels of the main delta. This central swamp never dries up. It's the most stable part of the Okavango. Forests of water lilies cover the lagoons. Here, a remarkable bird has carved out its own exclusive habitat. the Jacana's entire world floats on water. This doting father tends to the nest. His promiscuous partner is off looking for other mates. 
he'll dutifully raise the young alone. Nothing about their lily top home is stable. Long toes spread their weight on the lilies. But stand too long and they sink. They must move constantly to elude the watery world below them. Beneath their delicate feet, a tangle of water lilies shrouds a hidden wonderland. An underwater forest that has never been explored. One bizarre plant thrives down here. Bladderworts have no roots or leaves. They rely on neither sunlight nor soil for nutrients. They are carnivorous. Millions of tiny air traps capture larvae and freshwater plankton. The stands of killer plants help to keep mosquito populations and the malaria they carry in check. Out in the shallow channels are rolling fields of lilies. Squeakers hide in the curls of leaves, perfectly camouflaged to avoid detection by both prey and predator. This is another favorite hunting ground of the thin-faced bream. Every few seconds, it sucks in tiny prey with a vacuum-like gulp. As this glut of plant life dies and decays, the rotting matter sucks oxygen from the water. Only creatures evolved to live in these air-depleted waters survive here. The tiger fish don't come this far. It's good news for the tiny fish that wash down the panhandle as the flood moves south. They shelter from the current in the water lily forests, safe at last. The tiger fish avoid this stretch of delta because they can't survive in the low oxygen. But another predator fills the void that the tiger fish leave. African pike patrol the central delta and prey on the new arrivals. They don't have the speed and numbers of the tiger fish, but they are expert stalkers. They can hover motionless for hours, waiting patiently for a chance to strike. The 
Day by day, the pulse moves onward, coursing out into the desert. As the channels get shallower, elephants carve paths through the vegetation. They're here to feed off the tough papyrus. But they must eat through forests a bit to gain the nutrition they need. The destruction they leave in their wake creates new channels for the flood to course down. But the true architects of the delta are the hippos. <laughs> they are the chomping juggernauts that clear dense plant growth. Infants use their feeding mothers as islands. They need to breathe, but their short legs often don't touch the bottom. As hippos move between the swamp and dry land, they wear paths through the dense vegetation. These paths quickly become a convoluted underwater network of hippo highways. As plugs of reeds block one channel, the flood charges down new hippo paths. in the dead of winter, four months since its journey started, the flood breaks out over dry sand. Creatures accustomed to drought are caught off guard. Only the lucky few that can swim to safety survive the flash flood. Fortunately, the air trapped in this tortoise's shell keeps it afloat. This area is usually bone dry, so terrestrial creatures dominate it. This is lion territory. Lions don't like water, but they have a good reason for tolerating it now. The flood draws prey from across Botswana, right to their doorstep. All racing towards the promise of water. But in this dry season, it's the elephants that make the most remarkable journey of all. Some herds travel more than 100 kilometers over Botswana's most inhospitable terrain to reach the Delta's life-giving waters. With newborn infants struggling to keep up.
As they finally enter the lion's territory, the predators watch them with interest. The adults are off limits, but the young calves are potential prey. As they make their way towards the water, the herd can't let the calves stray too far. These elephants have been walking for months, barely eating and drinking enough to survive en route. The Delta's winter flood is literally their lifeline. This is the most water the youngest calves have ever seen. The thrill of getting wet outweighs their exhaustion. Babies copy the adults. But mastering the 150,000 muscles in the trunk takes time. It will take them years to get it right. With their thirst quenched, the herd needs food. Islands of rich grasslands and mapani forests dot the delta. But the elephants must cross the floodplains to reach them. The waters are almost as deep as the youngest infant is tall. If he loses his footing, he could drown. stays close, pushing him on. For danger waits for those that lag behind. Crocodiles also follow the pulse of water as it spreads, searching for easy opportunities to feed. A struggling elephant calf is a soft target. The herd makes a wall of legs around the infant that a crocodile wouldn't dare to breach. survives this crossing.
but his problems aren't over. The elephants disappear in the dense vegetation. As they graze, the herd begins to separate. The lapse of vigilance does not go unnoticed. The hungry pride has tracked their movements. into chaos. Elephants panic, unable to see the lions in the tall reeds. Mothers lose sight of their calves as the herd flees in every direction. When the attack finally ends, one calf is nowhere to be seen. The herd calls for him late into the night, but there is no response. The crocodile has discovered a more promising feeding ground. Above it is a fig tree, a high-rise nesting site for water birds. Open-billed storks claim the upper canopy. They gather as the water passes to hunt for snails and mussels in the draining floodplains. Yellow-billed storks occupy the mid-level. On the lower floors, demanding cormorant chicks harass their parents for food. Infant African darters are even bigger bullies.
feeding the greedy juveniles is an endless task. But fortunately, the tree itself is in a prey hotspot. This bird metropolis creates a steady stream of droppings that fall into the water below, creating a rich soup that draws large numbers of fish. The cormorants and darters are perfectly evolved to cash in on this bait trap. Their oilless feathers allow them to dive without floating to the surface. The crocodile wants a share of the feast. It creeps right in amongst the roots and sets an ambush. The fish must go down head first, or its spiny fins will catch in the croc's throat. Tossing it in the air is the only way to get it into position so that gravity can pull it down its throat. Two weeks after the lion's attack on the elephants, the consequences are revealed. The lost calf survived and has somehow found his way back to the herd. But he has not escaped unscathed. His tail is amputated and his trunk severed clean off. It's a miracle that he survived at all, but now that the wounds have healed, his chances are good. He can still suckle his mother's milk for more than two years, and his aunts and cousins will support him. The youngster will never live the life of a normal elephant, but the devastating wound is not a death sentence, yet. As an adult, he will struggle to feed and drink without a trunk, and his survival will depend on the herd's support. Every day that he grows larger, life will get harder. But for now, he can enjoy the carefree life of an infant.
As floodwaters grow deeper in the outer delta, the temperature slowly starts to rise. Spring is on its way. Flowers bloom in spectacular shapes and colors, and their nectar brings swarms of insects. Dragonflies spawn in the heat. They mate mid-air and lightly touch the female's abdomen to the water to deposit eggs. Their delicate relatives, the damselflies, have a more intricate mating ceremony. They make a pulsating heart of bodies. The male grips the female's neck with claspers on the end of his abdomen and she pushes the base of hers to an opening behind his legs. When the ceremony ends, the females drop below the surface. Carefully, they inch down lily stalks. Air is trapped in their wings and along their bodies, causing them to shine like silver underwater. It's just enough to supply them with oxygen as they deposit eggs deep in the lily stems with sharp tubes called ovipositors. Some males still cling to their female to ensure that she lays his eggs before other males can interfere. Females can store sperm from many suitors, so the only way to ensure that his genes are carried through is to guard her every move. As their ritual continues, a new romance begins above the surface. All across the swamp, branches are heavy with writhing bodies. Orgies of foam nest frogs churn up a froth of sperm and eggs. Soon, their tadpoles will feast on the larvae of the dragonflies and damselflies in the water below. By dawn, foam hangs from the trees like sticky snow. Inside it, bodies begin to squirm. Once they grow large enough to feel the pull of gravity, tadpoles fall through the foam. When they are the perfect size to survive alone, Gravity finally wins. By October, the flood has finally run its course.
A scorching summer sun sucks water from the swamp. Fish are concentrated in disappearing shallows. Across the outer delta, birds descend on shrinking pools. Crocodiles join the feast. With the wealth of food, they declare a truce with the bird life and feed together in relative peace. This year's flood is over, and the pulse that traveled a thousand kilometers to get here disappears into the sands of the desert. The transformation of the Delta's underwater world isn't over yet. 200 kilometers to the north, the panhandle is drained and shallow. All the fish are concentrated in the main channel. Egrets descend in thousands to snatch fish from the water. As chaos reigns amongst the reeds, a deadly army amasses beneath the surface. The catfish are back in force, and this time they raid the shadows in numbers that make the waters boil. Feeding frenzy comes at a cost. The writhing throng of bodies pushes catfish to the surface and exposes them to a far deadlier predator. Fish eagles can spot and track underwater prey from more than three stories up. Target locked, they swoop down with military precision to snatch fish that weigh up to three kilograms from the water. Rains finally bring the feast to a close. The dry season is over.
Far away to the north, water gathers once more in the Angolan highlands. The epic journey of a new pulse of water begins, opening another chapter in the daily lottery of life and death in the underwater world of the Okavango.